My name is Chantal Ramirez, and I'm a doctoral student in the Department of Psychology at the University of Texas at Austin. I am a co-author of a recent issue of the monographs of the Society for Research in Child Development, entitled Toward a Developmental Science of Politics. In our monograph, we review factors that are likely to affect children's political development, and we report the results of a study of 5 to 11-year-old children's views of the 2016 presidential election. In this short video focused on our study's methodology, I'm going to share some thoughts and suggestions concerning how and why to include Latinx participants in developmental science. Our study included 187 participants, 50 of whom were Latinx children. These children lived in counties in which the percent of the population that is Latinx ranged from 6%, a county in Kansas, to 34%, a county in Texas. At the start of our project, it was important to my co-authors and to me to include children from diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds in our research. We considered it especially important to include Latinx children for several reasons. One reason is that Latinx children comprise the largest segment of minority youth in the U.S. About a quarter of children under the age of 18 in the U.S. are Latinx. In the states of California and Texas, about 50% of the school age population is Latinx. A second reason is that our work assessed children's views of the 2016 election, and the election featured candidates whose campaigns highlighted policies with special relevance to Latinx populations, including immigration policies. The recruitment and retention of Latinx families in research can, however, be difficult. In an effort to include Latinx children in this research project and to bring additional expertise on Latinx families' perspectives and experiences, my collaborators approached me about joining them as an author. I readily agreed to join the project for multiple reasons. First, my interest in the research stemmed from my own experience as a Latina and as a second generation immigrant. My father came to the US in the early 1980s after fleeing from the Civil War in El Salvador. Although my mother was born in the US near the Mexican border, much of her family is composed of Spanish and Mexican immigrants. Coming from a family of Latinx immigrants, I've seen the struggle with acculturation and underrepresentation. A second reason why I was interested in this research project is that I believed that the scientific quality and value of the proposed work would especially benefit from the inclusion of Latinx participants. Unfortunately, however, much of the Latinx population, particularly those who are recent immigrants or who have limited proficiency in English, are hesitant to participate in research. Thus, it requires careful thought to find respectful and successful ways to recruit Latinx participants there are several issues that need to be considered. One issue is language. Approximately 37 million Latinx individuals in the U.S. speak Spanish at home, making it the country's most common non-English language. In the Austin, Texas area, one of the areas in which we were conducting our research, data from 2015 suggested that 66% of Latinx individuals speak Spanish at home. This made it important to have all materials for the study, for example, materials like consent forms and surveys, available in Spanish as well as in English. It is also vital to have experimenters and interviewers who speak Spanish available to interact with participating families. In my experience, having Spanish-speaking recruiters and researchers and having study materials readily available in Spanish make it far easier to attract Latinx participants than it is if only English-speaking interviewers and materials are available. Doing so not only means that the questions and surveys are understood, it also means that Latinx participants are more likely to feel welcome and secure in their participation. A second issue relates to unauthorized immigration. Most of the United States' 10.7 million unauthorized immigrants live in just 20 major metropolitan areas, one of which is Austin, Texas. Many unauthorized immigrants have concerns about being deported and in turn may be reluctant to volunteer for participation in research. But it is important to talk one-on-one -on -one with Latinx families about the value of their representation in research and provide them with information about the specific project itself. I tried to reach out personally to the families of all of the children attending the schools in which we recruited by spending time at the after-school sites. I introduced myself and explained the rationale for the project, including the importance of having the knowledge and views of children from all types of families represented. I was able to explain that this was important to me personally, as well as to the quality of our study. 
Finally, it is essential to provide Latinx families, especially those who are recent immigrants, with the details on the confidentiality of their participation and their protection as participants. During my time at the after-school sites, I was able to reassure parents that their names and the names of their children would be kept strictly confidential. As a result, they understood that even if they were unauthorized, their participation in the study would not be putting them or their family members at risk. I hope that I convinced you to make serious efforts to include Latinx individuals in your research enterprises as investigators and as participants, and to support such efforts by others. Recruiting Latinx investigators and participants requires special thought and strategies, but the effort can be highly successful and is very valuable.